All right, we're back. Um, you know, this is the tailgater generator from the big HF. Uh, a few things performance-wise you could do to get a little bit more. It's it's not going to be an astronomical amount of power, but it's it's going to. I'd say in longevity and runtime, you might get a little a little bit more longevity out of the motor and a little bit more um, runtime out of the fuel you know just due to the fact that you know I get it it's a governed system thing is that if the governor doesn't have to open the throttle as much to make the same amount of power it's not going to so a uh, big one is, you know, playing with the cylinder head, you know, and just, I, I get it, you folks are thinking, well, what can you do to a two-stroke cylinder head? Well, if you've got one of those fancy rotary tools like what I've got, you can actually do a lot, okay? The big thing is, is that if you're afraid of taking the motor apart so you you still got a little bit of warranty left I get it but you know such as this one this one's been out of warranty now two three years now so now one thing I have found that's nice and I coat my cylinders with uh, ATF, you know, just to make sure that they stay nice and lubricated, especially during these long, long times of uh, non-use. Now, what I, I've already done this to mine, and when you open yours up, yours is not going to look anything like this, okay? But I'm going to show you how I got to this point and the process that you do. Now, when you open yours up, yours is going to look pretty cakey. Because uh, really all they did is they flattened it and they made a spark plug hole. Uh, the rest is just straight casting. Um, realistically, folks, that they were looking for you know ease of assembly now mine had these big huge out shoots off of these walls I take those out because you're gonna get better flame propagation and you know you're gonna get more fuel more air fuel mix into the actual combustion area. Another thing that I did is, if you notice, it's really nice and shiny here. How I did this is, starters, I went around with the uh, sandpaper wheel uh, with the 220 and then I went to the 240 you're gonna go through a lot of these I'm gonna tell you that much right now and also be careful of the gasket mating surface you know of the gasket mating surface because uh, the gasket is reusable um, surprisingly uh, but you just kind of go around up and down and you know kind of work it towards that now the big thing is how I got rid of these ridges ironically I took the barrel and I went in there and I just went around 
inside just like that and it took care of those ridges on the inside now as you can see down in there I didn't get it all the way but you know it it's a lot better than what it was you do the paper trick you know you, you can do your paper by hand it's just gonna take you longer you know I wanted it done kind of on the quicker side then what I did is I came around is it, with the buffing wheel and I started out with a gray compound you can buy this at the big HF too and then cleaned it up and then shot it put green on it and that's how I got this beautiful beautiful coating this this nice smooth you know polished look now another thing is is that I also for flatness sake I put this on a flat piece of steel and I took a thousand grit sandpaper put ATF on the sandpaper and I worked it in until it got actually a lot of the you can still see them where the chuck of the rotary tool kind of hit in but there's that uh, the next one that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna actually be playing with the exhaust uh, I know that some folks are a little scared to play with two-stroke exhaust but the port the port is essentially the same whether it's the two-stroke or a four-stroke you you kinda want it smoothed out you, you don't want roughness uh, air turbulence because realistically where your turbulence should be is in your muffler system on a two-stroke that is what's pushing your gases back up into the motor the port should not technically be doing that it should be in the muffler that harmonics to bring the fuel air mixture pushing it back in all those harmonics are done with the muffler not the port now I would not go all the way into the cylinder but I I'm gonna tell you this much we're gonna we're going to go fairly far into the, the port. So, let me put this on its side, and I'm going to show you what the heck I'm talking about. Because, see, here's the thing, folks. There's all this roughness here. Let me get you. There's all this roughness inside here. Now, my plan is I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to get rid of the casting. I'm not, I'm not actually going to... Uh, I'm not actually going to be embiggening the port, I'm just going to be getting rid of the roughness. I, I'm not trying to do a full port match, you know, a, as you would be on a bigger four stroke engine, whatever. Uh, but getting rid of this roughness, it, in theory, the harmonic pulse that you're going to get from your muffler to shove stuff back in 
is going to be harder. And realistically, it should give you a better flow. So, uh, these are a few of the th things, you know, port wise, you can do to get one of these motors to give you a little bit more power. And the thing is, is that. I know I'm gonna get some hate mail, but the thing is is that you can build a little bit more power out of these than what they're rated for. Just due to the fact that the quality of the builds of these are just whoop, wrong direction. Uh, the quality of build on these is such that you can do a lot more and get a lot more out of them. Now, I have been playing with the idea of, and I'll, if you folks want to see it, put it down in the comments, because I'm not going to do it if nobody's going to watch it. I'm going to try and put a ignition coil from a <clears throat> V8 on here, or a, I've got two different coils I can try on this. I got one from a Chrysler 37, and I got one from a Ford 54. I'm leaning more towards the 54 coil, just due to the fact that. I know that the wires that go to the 54 coil are not as heavy a gauge as the one with the 37. A uh, big reason why I'm not using an LS coil is that those are a four wire coil. You know, I would have to figure out how to give it physical DC power at all times. So that's kind of the big reason why I'm not using an LS coil. I have tried the big canister coils on these. Uh, I don't think that these make enough power for the big 12 volt canister coil. I've been trying to get my hands on a 6 volt canister coil uh, because ironically these run about 8 volts DC. Weird, I know. They actually make more power on the AC side, leaning me towards thinking that this might actually be an AC coil. I know, weird, but, you know, China stuff for you. Um, other than that, another big thing is, you know, just upgrading the spark plug. Um, the, the factory plug is an N9YC. Um, realistically, for those of you that do not have much mechanical ability whatsoever, or the hand polishing work, uh, you can get different spark plugs for this engine other than the N9YC. Okay. Uh, the Autolite XS63, uh, the. What's another one? The Denso W W20. Uh, or if you're feeling brave. Uh, I've found that one out of a Chrysler 37 motor <laughs> actually fits in here and it does not contact the piston. So realistically, you know, that's completely seated and it, it does not contact the piston. So 
the one thing I don't like about it is, is that if you notice, it does shroud a little, but, you know, and this one is a ZFR6FGP for, you know, this came out of a Jeep Liberty, so, yeah, if you're brave, you know, you can use this one, if not, well, there's other plugs. Um, realistically, another big thing is this wire. This is a solid wire. This Do not go to the auto parts store, buy a set of piece of spark plug wires you can, and put, chop them up and put them on this. Okay? Because this is got solid copper wire in it. You can actually put a different wire on this because all they do is that they actually just unscrew out of the coil. Okay, there, there's actually a screw in here. And they literally just unscrew right off the coil. Um, Summit sells it by the roll. I Speedway has a 20-foot section of solid copper ignition wire, uh, relatively cheap. Um, and the big reason why you don't want to use uh, standard automotive, well, modern automotive uh, wire is the fact that it's resistor wire. It, okay this whole thing maybe has 0.1 ohm resistance at best I mean where you take a length of you know this is what about a foot foot and a quarter uh, you take this in a modern automotive ignition plug wire uh, this is going to have probably about an ohm to an ohm and a half of resistance which is going to break down the inside of this coil really quickly. It, it's, this coil is going to get hot on the inside and, it, and it's going to fail. So, and you can also get the terminal ends from, you know, Napa, uh, Napa Speedway, a lot of other places. So y you don't have to go with this weird uh, staked on ignition wire thing. So realistically, folks, there are things you can do to these motors to you know give yourself a little bit of extra oomph. Uh, so, with that said, folks, tell me in the comments, would you like another one of these videos on this motor? Uh, put thumbs up. You know, you don't even have to comment. Just put a thumbs up to this video if you folks want to see another tips and tricks on what to do with these motors because I you know we've got it it's out of warranty we might as well play with the darn thing so thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one